Hello, my name is Kishwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Kishwani. We are here because we want to prepare for GMAT. We have been solving GMAT math problems out of this book here GMAT Review, the official guide, the 13th edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. The problem that we are about to solve is, is the one that you will find on page number 290. Please turn to page 290. Today is our lesson number 228. And the problem that we are going to do is 163. 163. Let's take a look at it. It says everyone contributes equally. Everyone contributes equally. The total amount of money that was raised was $60. The question simply is, how many people? That is how I have it written. Let's read, read, let's read the question properly, the way it appears in the book. It says, every member of a certain club volunteers to contribute equally to purchase a $60 gift certificate. Alright, so there you go, $60 were raised and everybody contributes equally. The question simply is, how many members are there in the club? If, if, uh, if we are told that every member in the contributes contributes, Rather, every member in the, uh, in the club contributes, and every member contributes equally. Nobody gives anything more than the other person, and by the same token, nobody gives less. Let's do it out. Let's see what they tell us. In the first statement, they tell us every member, every member's contribution is to be four dollars. Oh, what the hell! Everyone contributed four dollars. This is just pure joke. Obviously, if everyone contributed four dollars and sixty dollars were raised, there are fifteen people in the in the, in the club. I don't know why they even bother with something as silly as that. So, A D B C E. Therefore, first statement by itself, obviously, clearly, is enough. Answer cannot be B C or E. Let's look at second statement. It is the second statement that's going to get prickly, which is why in the last video I didn't. I, I changed my mind towards the end of the video. I decided to do this separately because the second one you will see it involves some work if we want to understand what's going on behind it, which is a different story. You see, these are data sufficiency questions. We don't actually have to solve the problem. We just have to understand that it can be solved, but we can actually solve it just for learning purposes. In the second statement, they tell. In the second statement, they tell us. If five of them, if five people didn't contribute, we are told that in that case all others would have to fork over two more dollars. It says if five people refuse to contribute, the rest of the members in the club would have to fork over two more dollars. Let's see how, how they put it. Um, I doubt very much if, they, if they're going to put it as eloquently as I did. It says, if five members, of, if five members fail to contribute, the share of each con contributing member will increase by two dollars. All right. So let's do it out then. So we're going to denote, we're going to use, let each members, con each person's, each person's contribution to be D dollars. We're using letter D to represent each person's contribution. We are also going to say let the number of people number of people be N. In other words, we have N people, they are each contributing D dollars. And we are told that the total amount raised was sixty dollars. That's our first equation. Let's see where our second equation is going to come from. Our second equation is going to come from right here. This is this is the second statement. You see, that's why in the real exam, you really don't have to do anything at all. That's why data sufficiencies are uh, double-edged sword. They tend to be a little bit more tricky, but at the same time, you don't have to do any work. That is your second second equation. So we have two equations, two unknown. It can be done. 
the first this statement is also enough by itself. Let's see what the equation looks like. That is, that is your second equation. All you have to do is translate this English language sentence into a mathematical uh, into, into the language of mathematics, into, into, into the language of algebra. That's what it is. An equation, as I always remind you, is simply a sentence in the language of algebra. If five people did not contribute, well, if the five people did not contribute, we have n number of people. If five of them refuse to contribute, then now we have n minus five people doing the contribution. And, they're told, and we are told that as a result, if that were the case, then the contribution that each person would have to make would be two more dollars than what, 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 what it ha would have been had everybody contributed. So, this is the amount of money that they would have contributed if every one of them had agreed. Now they have to contribute two more. Voila, that's it. And that amount is also equal to 60. There is a second equation. We have two equations, two unknown, we have two independent equations, two unknown, of course we can solve for D and N. Second statement is also enough, the answer is D. The answer here is D. Let's solve. Now, as far as the exam is concerned, this is over and done with. It should take no more than a few seconds. Now we can actually do it out, as I said, for learning purposes to find out exactly how many people are there. It doesn't hurt. It does not hurt. So here is, here is the first statement which is also equal to 60. This is the second statement which is also, second equation which is also equal to 60. If we combine them together, we can put n times d in, in place of 60. Let's open it up. n times d plus 2n minus 5d minus 10 equals n times d. n times d cancels out and we end up with 2 times n minus 5d equals 10 equals to 0. Now, since we have two variables here, n and d, we can't really do much with it, so we have to replace one variable in terms of the other. We can do it either way. We can either replace n in terms of, we can say that n is equal to 60 over d, or we can say that d is equal to 60 over n, either way. So let's replace the d. So 2 times n minus 5 times d, d here is 60 over n. I'm going to put that in here. 60 over n minus 60. As you can see, a quadratic equation is emerging. It may be quadratic, it may be a quadratic equation, but it can be solved. Multiply all whole thing by n and we end up with 2n squared minus 5 times 60 minus 10n equals to 0. You have to pay attention, that's what it is. I see a 2 here, I see a 60 here, I see a 10 here. Let's divide the whole thing by n. n squared minus 5 times 30 minus 5n equals 0, which is the same as n squared minus 5n minus 150 equals to 0. So we're looking for two numbers. We need two numbers. We need two numbers whose sum has to be negative 5 and whose product has to be negative 150. Can you think of two such numbers? So that when we add them we get a negative 5 and when we multiply them we get negative 150. Well that's pretty straightforward. Those two numbers are going to be 10 times 50 or 10 times 15. 10 times 15, one has to be positive, one has to be negative. Which one is negative? Because we want some to be negative, the bigger number is going to be negative. Well, those are our two factors. Let's continue on the top. Let's continue this on the top. So n squared minus 5n, which we're going to write that as negative 15n plus 10n, because negative 15 and 10n is going to give us our 5n and negative 150 equals to 0. Here we have n squared, here we have 15n. Let's take out n common. n minus 15. Here we have 10, here we have 150. Let's take out 10 common. Once we take out the 10 common, out of this term, we are left with just n. And out of this term, 150 divided by 10 is going to give us our 15. So here we have n minus 15, here we have n minus 15, let's take that out common. And 
here we are left with just n and here we are left with 10 which implies because their product is 0 that implies that either n minus 15 is equal to 0 or n plus 10 is equal to 0 if n plus 10 happens to be 0 n would have to be negative 10 and of course n cannot be negative 10 because we are talking about number of people so that's irrelevant n equals 15 there are 15 people in the club 15 people in the club they each contributed four dollars isn't that what the first statement told us? There you go, you see in the first statement they tell us they each contributed four dollars. They never, as I always remind you, contradict each other. Two statements always substantiate each other. And therefore, I was about to do the work to see if 15 is in fact the right answer. We don't have to do the work, it's obvious the necessity, of, it's obvious the having to check uh, whether 15 is the right answer. 15 would have to be the right answer because of the fact that they tell us in the first statement that each contributed four. We are verifying right now, see if our answer is correct, see if 15 is correct. 15 would have to be correct because in the first statement they tell us that everybody contributed four dollars and we also know that uh, uh, the total contribution was 60 so 15 is the right answer there we go but if we didn't have the first statement if there was no way of actually knowing that we would have to verify it so this is 60 now if, if, if four people refuse if four people if four refuse then we would have 11 we would have 11 and as a result as a result, we are told that everybody would have to contribute two more dollars. But that does not work out. N minus four. What was what was the second statement? Oh sorry, not four people. If five people refused. If five people refused, we would have ten people, and as a result, everybody would have to contribute, we are told, two more dollars. Two more dollars as opposed to four dollars they would have to contribute six dollars and there you go our sixty dollars again so if five fewer people contribute everybody would have to get paid six dollars each because there are only ten people ten times six is sixty if everybody contributes then everybody would have to pay four dollars because four times fifteen is sixty you see? that's it i will see you tomorrow okay but you do realize that most of the work that we do here 90% of the work that we do here is not something you would do in the real exam. It wasn't necessary. As soon as we established that we had two independent equations and two unknown, that is all we needed. And the first statement, of course, was just, was, was just a joke. Second statement, you set up the two equations, n times d is 60, and then n minus 5 times d plus 2 also equals 60. You're done. Two equations, two unknown. You understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.